it has been an indeterminate amount of time since Roger Wilco rocketed away from Gohal's burning space orbs. Time stands still for our hero in suspended animation. Its engines long spent, the small escape pod drifts aimlessly through unfamiliar star fields, its course altered many times by small asteroids and space debris. Inside, Roger lies undisturbed in his sleep chamber, but not for long. Considered to be nothing more than another piece of scrap, is taken aboard a robot commanded garbage freighter. Unfortunately, these robots have no regard for organics. The small pod is jarred by a sudden shock which triggers the sleep chamber's revive mode. As the glass shroud slides back, Roger slowly begins to regain consciousness. You notice that the sounds from the pod grow softer until they are imperceptible. Having served its purpose and taxed its resources, the pod gives a final hum and shuts down. Alright, hello and welcome to Let's Play Space Quest 3. This was um, released, I want to say, in 1990. Actually, probably late 80s. I don't have a date on it right off the top of my head. This is from the kind of awkward era of Sierra games, between the 16 color AGI and the 256 color SCI 1 running on the VGA card. Um, this is SCI 0, it was built for the EGA card which could do 16 colors from a selection of 64. And so we have a little bit better color depth than we did in the AGI games, but it's still not as good as Space Quest 1, BGA remake was. We have a mouse, but we, it's not controlled by the mouse like it was in um, Space Quest 1 BGA. This is still a parser-based game, but the parser pops up in a window, and it actually pauses the game while you're typing, which would have been very handy in Space Quest 2. You're standing in a debris-cluttered junk bay. An escape pod rests in the middle of the room. There are chunks of metal lying around, which seem to be sections of old space work. Just our speed. Three seems about right. 
And you will also have noticed that this game had or uses the um, MT32 MIDI device again. Various types of abandoned spacecraft litter the floor of this intergalactic junkyard. All this place needs is a junkyard doll. You shiver at the thought. <laughs> the other thing you notice is during the introduction, there's that one line of um, digital speech. Um, that is, I believe, the first digital speech in Space Quest. Again, because the um, remake doesn't count. That came after this game. Doesn't look like we can go this way. There's a conveyor belt. Buckets are attached to a conveyor. They haul metal debris to a horizontal conveyor above. Maybe we can get a ride on that. Some of the other SCI Zero games have are set up so that you can right-click with the mouse and get a look at this object kind of thing. This ship says Jupiter 2. This baby must have been floating around out there for a long time. It doesn't hold your interest for very long. I want to say that the Jupiter 2 is from Lost in Space. Lost in Space, Jupiter 2. Let's get closer to the, um... This is, ship is another fine but worthless Acme product. Right, Acme is the brand favored by Wiley Coyote of Looney Tunes fame for no good reason. This looks like some type of tunnel boring implement. This bulbous craft looks like it has seen a lot of action in its day. You believe it to be a bow tie fighter dating back to the Cologne Wars, a true relic. This is, of course, a Star Wars tie fighter dating back to the Clone Wars. This is the escape pod. look at the object on the floor reveals that it is a warp motivator. It looks a bit more high-tech than the other junk strewn about this locale. Sturdily constructed, its only protrusion is the modular plug near its base. Okay, so we have... so we can go up the buckets to the conveyor belt above, or we can go through this tunnel tube thing here. You are quite impressed by the size of this junk breeder. The skeletal remains of a stripped-down space tanker stage lie half-buried in scrap. And there's some kind of a skeleton up here that it probably won't let us see. Looks to be another metal men metallic menace whose time has come and gone. Hopefully fate will be kinder to you. We'll save our traditional death save game. Someone or something has done a real job on this tanker. Was this the result of some space battle? Or perhaps you're not the only one roaming around in here. Except for the one on the left, most of the wires here look dangerously worn. You take the only decent piece of wire available. Now, one thing annoying about this game is that I can never tell, I never remember if Roger is still moving when he enters a new screen. When he's off camera like that, behind something, it's, you don't know if you need to press the button, or pressing the button will stop him moving. This looks like a ladder. Maybe we can climb here? Alright, 
let's see if we can look around and you find yourself at the bottom of, a, of another trash pit. An interesting array of alien artifacts is strewn from one end to the other. A large ship is in the middle, and a small one is off to one side. They look like rem remnants of an orbital space station, or perhaps some, over some type of toys for an oversized child. We have obviously a Lego brick here, a set of Tinker Toys, some random other junk. It's a cute little thing. You've never seen anything like it in these parts, but then where are these parts? Some writing on its exterior reads Bowman was here. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Bowman was here on a pod. Yep, Bowman was the guy on um, 2001 A Space Odyssey. All the metal has very jagged edges, but is otherwise fairly ordinary. Okay. So I don't see anything we can do here. Um, the ship might be a candidate for, just for getting us out of here. Probably not going to let us climb up it for some bizarre reason. There's no good way to scale the slick ship. If only we had a ladder. for later, we may, um, find a way to use that ship, but I think the only place we haven't yet gone is up those buttons. And the nice, pretty garbage trader music has gone away to be replaced by the hum of the machinery. And we've been picked up. Dropped onto the conveyor belt, and hmm, that's probably not a good thing. Shredded like an Iran Contra document, your many independent parts floated to the bottom of the hopper. This is of little importance to you, what with your being dead and all. You're, less than a, you're a less than choice cut, Wilco. Darn, I didn't get to read that. Alright, last time up this thing for right now. But we are going to take advantage of the fact that the parser stops the game while we're typing. So we'll see if we can stand up and jump and get a hold of this blue rail that goes around. Go. And I'll probably have to chop some of that out when I'm editing. And this must be the control center for the garbage freighter. It's not a model of robot you've seen before. The droid appears to be dedicated to, the, to his workstation. It seems harmless enough. The narrator did say that these things are not have no regard for organics, though. So I'm sure if we stick around long enough, it'll zap us. What is this thing? In this room, the rail makes a U-turn. There's a machine here which hangs under the rail. There's a chute at the bottom. In the middle are panels of modern devices being tended to by a droid. Flopping into the seat, you grasp the forward-backward control of the grabber. And we can go around. But what we want to do right now is go here.
and we land in this soft pile of debris at the bottom of the chute. And there are rats here. You can hear something scurrying above, around above you. You can't actually see the rats because they're hidden in the shadows. Some brittle-looking wire runs from lamp to lamp and then disappears into a hole in the left. You peer into the small opening and notice a tiny reactor which seems to be providing power for the lights. You unhook the reactor from the cheap wires and take it with you. Now it's dark. There's a ladder here. Let's see if we can go up the ladder. Bending aside a thin piece of scrap, you find an opening into another area and climb on in. You grab the ladder and jam it into your pocket. Ouch. Look at our inventory. We have the glowing gem we picked up in Space Quest 2. We have a piece of electrical wire. Have a ladder and a reactor. Somewhere it described the ladder as collapsible. A folding ladder that easily fits into your pocket, but um, it's almost as funny to think of from shoving a whole ladder into his pocket. seem to have been mugged by some type of large rat. As you pick loose fur from your teeth, you notice a less bulky feeling. And it took my wire and my reactor. And so the gem of the ladder. get back down here and we notice that the lights are back on. There's also an unconnected wire in there now. And we have our wire and our reactor again. doesn't do that overlord rat doesn't come back. And in fact it doesn't. The important thing though is that we now have a ladder. Slick up here, be careful. You move into position and grabbing the dull finish of the hatch's handle, commence to open and enter the ship. At first, you are surprised at how intact the ship's interior is. Immediately to your right is the panel of the red button. At midship on the right wall is the ship's main diagnostic computer. Directly across are two passenger seats. Ahead of you is the cockpit. The ramp is immobilized by the junk it's laying in, so you exit through the hatch and stick. Right. 
Power critically low. Auxiliary reactor not online. Darn it, Sierra, stop with the timed boxes. It's really getting annoying. Insufficient power to commence, so the system check using stored power below 10%. Right, what's that? You look into the cavity and notice only two cable ends. Someone made off has made off with the ship's power supply. What if that reactor we have? You drop the reactor into the hole and attempting to reconnect the cables, you find that one is much too short. You carefully connect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back in place once you're finished. Power level nominal, auxiliary reactor online. Auxiliary reactor. Nominal. Landing gear. Nominal. Warp motivator. Malfunction unit not installed. All right. All righty then. There's not one down here. But if we remember when we started this game, the very first room after the, where the escape pod was setting, we see there's this hidden warp motivator. It looks like the warp motivator you saw on the aluminum mallard status computer. Sturdily constructed, its only protrusion is a modular plug near its base. While relatively small, it seems to be quite dense. I think we're looking at a potential hernium if any attempts are made to manually relocate it. Hmm. Wonder if that thing we use up the, the uh, rail could help us out here. So we go back here, and this is why I took the ladder, because we're going to have to go back down through that chute to get out. Now it is possible to do this in one trip up here, however that implies that you are doing things because you can, not because you know you need to do them. If Roger stands here long enough, he will get zapped by the robot. I'm not sure how long it actually takes. But Roger does eventually get zapped. You really bit the beam, Buckwheat, and there's a lack, there's that lack of regard for organics in action again. I guess they never heard of the warning shot concept around here. Anyway, you're dead. Hole in one. Hope you enjoy your new flow-through ventilation system.
From your seat, you see a handle presently being gripped by you, which controls motion and a button marked claw. If you press the claw button in the right place, and it's somewhat generous about what the right place is, you don't have to be pixel perfect aligned with it. The claw senses, con or senses contact with the warp motivator, grasps it firmly, and begins the ascent back to the grabber. As long as you're close there, it will pick it up. Again, we just have to be close in the right corner of the screen or so in order to do this. Sensing an adequate surface, the claw releases its cargo and begins the ascent to the grabber unit. The object thuds into place within the cavity of the ship. I'm going to go forwards this time because I don't want to keep hearing that beeping noise. Right, and then I think. We, once we get to that point, we are going to, once we get back to the control room and down into the um, junk pit, we're probably going to wrap this up for the evening. Because we are getting close to my target time here. I think we're almost ready to get out of here if the ship doesn't want anything else. So thanks for watching, and tune in next time for some more Space Quest 3.